Alrighty, alrighty. Sorry, everybody, for the technical difficulty. Uh, Old Troy City Reptiles live and coming at you straight. TGH live. It's up to you, brother. Are we all set? We live, Ed? Yes, sir. We are live. All right. What's going on, guys? Um, I just had to pull up. Uh, I, I just had to hold on. Let me lower this volume. Sorry, guys. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, I had to get onto a different device to be able to read the comments. Um, today, basically, we're gonna uh, be speaking about you know um, getting into um, reptiles um, and. Not just getting into reptiles, getting into like different aspects of like the reptiles, like getting into doing education, educational, um, like show the seminars, um, getting into reptiles um, in general, um, what you should do before you get a reptile. Um, and, you know, uh, if you want to go, once you have reptiles and you have establish you know um a pretty good understanding of them and you want to do like some educational like show the seminars how to uh, how to go about that so um uh let me see if this is working um not sure if my if uh, i'm getting uh can can i get a few thumbs up just to make sure that i uh that people can hear me and everything's going good over here. All right. Um, so uh, just my comments ain't coming. I, last comment I got was uh, at 8.11. Um, could everybody hear me fine? Uh, can everyone? Um, uh, let's see, we got 10 people here. Can everyone hear me fine? Is everyone all set? To, can, can, we, can, I, can I continue on? Can everyone hear me? Are we good? Doesn't seem to be working. All right, well, I'm just going to get started. I don't know if people um, can hear me or not, but then you can go back and watch um, Ed's video. Um, I first off, I want to start off by saying getting into reptiles. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, uh, that I know and just in general, um, and a lot of like old, like old, not old. What I mean is, uh, people who've been around and who's old enough to remember the first snake bites that ever came out that inspired a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, there was back then it was just like Brian Bocek. He was pretty much the only one letting people uh, uh, doing anything toward you know with reptiles and snakes and stuff. I remember watching like the real old snake bite videos. Um, and then, uh, you know, they started, they were doing a lot of educational stuff in there, um, teaching people how to like breed. And uh, I always loved reptiles since I was a kid. Now, as everyone knows, my first reptile ever was a Burmese python. And I do not recommend that. I'm just saying that was 
I'm, a, you know, something that was really young, and the guy at the pet shop didn't tell me, didn't tell us any better on how big, how big it was gonna get. So, with that being said, I'm gonna hold on. I'm just gonna try to restart this because I'm not getting any updates whatsoever. Okay, so let me know what we got. One second, guys. I'm just trying to get this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, all right. So, um, thanks everyone for showing up. Um, you know, I'm just uh, filling in because Ed, uh, as we know, is working and, um, you know, to keep things moving along, you know, it's cool to have some people step up and just, you know, I, you know, what's a half an hour out of my time, you know, help rent out, you know, it, it, it is what it is, you know, so, um, before, um, thank you for letting me know I'm doing fine, um, thank you very much, uh, all right, so I'm going to place this here so I can read the comments, um, but I want to get onto the topic. Now, guys, when you're getting into reptiles, one thing, you really, no matter what reptile it is, one thing you want to do is you want to research. Back in the day, it was really hard getting into the reptiles because everyone hid their so-called secrets on how to make a certain snake or what was in this or what was in that, you know, what genes made this snake. Um, and all the big breezes did it. All the big breezes did it. Listen, a lot of people did it. And, you know, there's, I speaking for myself, I can't, I can say somewhat, you know, a lot of, a lot of what I know was pretty much self-taught by, you know, trial and error. And then I, I had somebody mentor me for two years. He was an older gentleman, he ended up passing away. He did all types of reptile, venomous and everything. But, and I mentioned him in my video before, um, but it's research, 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 research. Um, I would not recommend somebody going out and just buying a reptile and then, um, you know, figuring it out from there. Because now you got people um, uh, that are willing to help you. Um, you know, and there's people willing to help you that even if they're not gonna, even if you're not trying to buy a snake off them. I know uh, um, there's some breeders who really don't want to deal with you unless you're buying something from them because, and they'll tell you straight out, like, you know what, serious inquiries only, you call them, you ask them a question, they're like, hey, do you want to buy the snake or not, whatever, blah, blah, you know, I, you know it, it happens, it is what it is. Do research, there's multiple people out there you can turn to, if you want to turn to myself, um, I, I would help you, if you want to turn to Ed, pretty sure Ed, if he doesn't have the answer. He can reach out to people who will, who who can give him, you know, the the you know, um, the answer to your question. Um, and you know, again, I am here for the whole community. I'm not here just for, um, you know, people who are part of the genetic hunters or people who are just, uh, you know. Um, you know, I'm here for everybody. And so it doesn't matter if you're part of TGH, not part of TGH, doesn't matter who you are. If you're a good person and you, you, you truly want to learn and you don't know something, just ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I tell people that all the time. Just reading some comments, guys. Um, 
So uh, with that being said now, um, once you got your reptiles, you did your research, you got your reptiles, and um, whether you have a self-built rack or you got a professional rack, you know, you get your thermostat, everything's going good. Um, you know, some people hit a bump. Okay, I had four snakes, now I got 15. Now, where am I going to get rodents from? So, guys, all this going to be taken to all this going to be taken into account. You know, the more reptiles you get, the more snakes you get, the more you know rodents you're going to need. Whether it be mouse, rats, the more you're going to need. So, if you don't breed them yourself, or you don't know somebody who's a breeder, um, pet shops are very expensive. Um, I had somebody who didn't want to wait for um, two large rats. They went to the pet shop and spent $13 on two large rats. That is, that is ridiculous. Um, so, you know, everything has to come into play here. You got to look at the cost of your electricity bill going up a little bit. You gotta look at the cost of what you're gonna use for bed. You're gonna use paper towel, you're gonna use Reptor chip, whatever that's there's gonna be a cost there. Um, you know, thermostat, that's gonna be a cost there. Um, just and once you if you get all that figured out, that's why I tell people start slow. Start with maybe, you know, three, four females and one male. And see how get your feet wet first. Um, and see how you like it. You know, if, 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 if it's for you and, and, and you like it, because look, I'm telling you, I know a lot of people who jumped in, you know, just went gun ho and jumped in and not even a year later, they're selling their whole collection and they're not even getting what they paid for it. You know, they probably, I know one gentleman who dropped $17,000 in a year. Um, and it wasn't on racks, like he had, you know, probably $2,000 in racks. So that means it was 15 grand in snakes. Um, he bought like, uh, he bought, a, he bought a few, he bought a couple, like two double recessives. He bought a few recessives. He bought, you know, a lot of, uh, cold that were hets. Um, he just went crazy. And it was le like less than a year later, you see him posting that his collection's for sale. And I actually know the person, it, it, the person's local, it actually is even, even Quincy, Massachusetts, the person who bought his whole collection. And when I see them at an expo, I said, hey, you know, I heard you bought a collection. You know, he didn't have it that long. And he was, uh, you know, yeah, well, you know, who wouldn't buy the whole collection with the racks and everything? Um, I was, you know, when we were talking, he paid six thousand five hundred dollars, but seventeen thousand dollars in snakes and racks. Like, dude, I would have jumped on that, like just in a hot beat. Um Just reading some comments, guys. I don't know. I don't um so um now if you guys decide you wanna use you use like it and you just wanna grow and expand, then you can grow and expand by holding stuff back or selling some of your animals and using the profit. Um you know, well, I say profit, but it's really not like a profit until you're like reading on the bigger scale, but using some of that money to buy new genes, bring new blood in, buy new genes. Um, and you can grow from there. So, and a lot of people have been asking me lately. That's why when I talked to Ed earlier, he said, you know, like, hey, what do you want the topic to be about? And I basically told, you know, I told him, so, you know, uh, I really want to talk about a lot of people have been asking me. I 
seen some of your earlier videos and um you know when are you going to do more educational videos well i don't do them really until the summertime because it's not it's not safe bringing your snakes out in the freezing cold just to go do a birthday party you know so the you know and just to let everyone know the ymca has um uh got in contact with my wife and they heard from um you know the the guy who runs the uh the guy who's in charge of the the boys and girls club told them about us and they reached out to us and um they asked us if we'd be willing to do um because they also have an after school program if i'd be willing to do an after school program um for um the kids and i says well if i would do that it have to be like right before school gets out right when the weather's decent you know and 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 they agree to it so we're going to be doing one at the ymca but how i got my feet in that door um i did birthday parties at first i i advertised myself to like friends uh and family and i told them i do it for free and i got my foot in the door that way educating and I, I wasn't really good speaking in front of people. So that kind of broke the ice for me, speaking in front of like, you know, uh, like kids and their parents, people who I knew. And then um, when the Boys and Girls Club reached out to us, um, it was, my son was going there for the after school program. Um, I'm sorry, for the uh, summer program when, uh, me and my wife would work. He would go to their, uh, he would go to the, uh, Camp Welch. And basically we, we pay, we used to pay and he would go to Camp Welch. Um, so one of the gentlemen said, Hey, when I, I see you, your son talks about reptiles a lot and he knows a lot about snakes. Um, he's like, you know, uh, I think that's very cool. Do you teach him that? And I says, um, well, we have a lot of reptiles and I gave him a business card. And a few weeks went by, I seen him again, and he said, uh, excuse me, uh, Snake Man, that's what he called me, Snake Man. I'm like, yes. He's like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you do any educational stuff? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, like with your reptiles, do you show and do show and tells? I'm like, yeah, I, I you know, I, yeah, I do, because I did. I did birthday parties, and, you know, so I did. Technically, I did. So he asked me if I would do, you know, a show for all the kids there. And it was during the summertime. Um, it wasn't for the after school. I mean, it wasn't for the summer camp. It was for the Boys and Girls Club. So I said, yes, I'll do it. So I got my foot in the door that way. And I remember walking in there and seeing just like um, there were so many kids in the basketball gymnasium that were there just to see my reptiles and to hear me talk. And it was some parents showed up and I got nervous. Um, so what I did is I just said, you know what, Sean, do what you do. You know what you're doing, do what you do and just you know, speak to them about what you love doing. Speak to them about your passion, speak to them from your heart. So I did that and they brought in it was nine. They brought it had to had to bring them in by groups because there were so many so many people. They brought in nine different groups of thirty people. Um, so the first group that came in were younger kids, and that taught me how to deal with younger kids. Younger kids like to touch and grab. So with the younger kids, we just put a red tape line around. Now now that we do that now we do that all the time. Younger kids. Okay, do not pass this line and do not touch nothing. And at the end, we will let you, you know, hold a snake or like hold our blue tongue skink or hold our red eye crocodile skink or, you know, hold the baby ball python, you know, not a baby, but hold the ball python, a small ball python and hold the big ball python. Uh, now, it was me and it was my wife and my son. 
And my son was real young when we first did it, but now my son's a big help because my son will actually, um, with the bigger ball pythons, he will hold the scary pot. He will hold, you know, like not the head. He wouldn't grab the head, but he'd hold like the upper part of the body and he would just walk around. No, he'd hold the whole snake, walk around, let people touch it. He knows to keep the head away from everybody and kids would touch it. And, um, you know, the, the kids would pet it and they'd be like, oh, I thought it was slimy. You know, I thought snakes were slimy. So, uh, you know, that's how it first started. And then as the older groups came in, they were more interested in like, well, why does that snake look like that? Like, you know, because back then when I first started, like I had a pie. And they were like, that blew everybody away. Um, and a blue eye Lucy, that blew everybody away. People were like, that's not a ball python. That's the you know, that's a boa. My my cousin has an all white boa. That's a boa. I'm like, no, this is a ball python. And I just started explaining a little bit, and the kids really enjoyed it. And then uh, the rest of the groups came in, and at the end of my very first one, um, a few parents came up to me afterwards, and they said, "Hey, we really enjoyed what you did here today. Do you have any cards?" Uh, or or a way we can get in touch with you. And so I gave them my contact info. And over the next sev seven months, I did nine birthday parties. And that was all stemmed from the Boys and Girls Club. The following year, they asked, and I went back. And we've been doing it ever since. Um, now it's come to a point uh, where they are willing to pay us for the summer programs because every child that goes to the summer programs, um, you know, 80% of the kids that go there, their parents pay. You know, there's some people who don't pay because they um, financially, they wouldn't be able to pay. So there's like a program for them, but still, the kids don't get excluded. I actually really enjoy, you know, uh, you know, working with, you know, all the kids, you know, and I, uh, it just brings so much joy to me when I can see, um, you know, maybe a kid that may be going through some stuff at home, because um, you can see it on their face that maybe something's wrong or they're stressed out. Young kid, and, and that kind of breaks my heart. But to see them for that, you know, hour, hour and 20 minutes with a big smile on their face, it touches me in a way that it's, it's awesome, guys. And until you do it and you touch somebody and, 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 and you see the impact that you can have just – you know, giving somebody some knowledge and, you know, teaching somebody and seeing, like, like kids are so innocent. Now, fear, there's, you know, we all have a fight or flight response, but fear and ignorance and racism is all alert. It's alert behavior. For someone to be afraid of something, they're afraid of it because somebody said that. That's no good. That's dangerous. So, but these kids have no fear. And it's, it's, it's amazing that, the, you know, their parents are like, oh, don't touch that, James. James, don't touch that. And the kid comes up. I'm like, hey, your mommy don't want you to touch this. And I tell the, the mother, like, hey, he's going to be perfectly fine. I'll hold the head. You know, is it okay? Could he, could, could he come over here or do you want him not? Because you're his parent, you know. Oh, okay. Then the mother will walk over with him. Then the kids pets the snake, and then the mother will touch the snake. And next thing you know, you know, fifteen minutes goes by. Now the mother's holding the snake, and she was the one who instilled this, probably instilled this fear in this kid. So it's just, it, it's, it's, it's that's how I got my foot in the door, guys. So if you want to get your foot in the door to do educational stuff, um, make sure. What you're telling them is fact. Make sure what you're telling them is accurate. Um, because you never know who's in the audience. 
um, there was actually two years ago, there was another, uh, well, not a, there was someone who owned a pet shop, an exotic pet shop, um, and their, ch their child went there and they came to see what it was about. And when I seen him, I noticed him, like, this guy looks familiar. And at the end of the show, we were talking and I seen him at, I seen him at an expo and we were talking. And he's like, hey, dude, you did a great job. He's like, you know, I, he's like, my hat goes off to you. He's like, I couldn't deal with all the kids. You did a really great job. And it makes you feel good. So getting started with reptiles, there's so many things you can do. You can get start, you can get into reptiles just to keep. But, you know, just that, you know, just, just because you love keeping, you enjoy keeping. You can get into reptiles and then realize, hey, I want to try breeding. You can get into the reptile and say, hey, you know what? I would like to do like some educational stuff. Um, you know, there's just, you know, this hobby, like I tell people, is, is going to continue to grow. And there's nothing besides, you know, um, you know, uh, stupid laws that they would want to come up with. To, you know, try to ban us from having snakes. So again, I always say support and become a member of USOC because they help us a lot. Um, and uh, I just have to get that little plug in there for USOC. Um, but they really do help us, guys. And you pretty much... If you give this your all, you can pretty much build something incredible. You never know where this is going to take you. Where, you know, I don't know where Old Troy City Reptiles um, is. Sorry, I got a cold, guys. Um, I never know where, I don't know where Old Troy City Reptiles is going to take us. Um, it could take us. Um, you know, you know, one day it could take us and we could be in a place where we have um, financial freedom where, you know, my wife could quit her job and because we're doing reptiles almost full time. It can take us down a path where we're being just we're just traveling around doing educational stuff um, throughout the summons. It can just, I don't know where it's going to take me, but all I know is I am going to go where my heart tells me to go. I am going to go where I feel I can help the most. Um, I'm going to do, you know, uh, things that can educate and help the youth because there was all of us at one time were children who were young. And not many of us had somebody educate us about reptiles and get us excited, get us excited as children about reptiles. And I go around, I do that stuff. And it's amazing. It's awesome. Like, you don't understand. It's like, you know, you hear rock and roll star saying, do that high on stage. I get like that high, like, you know, how you get you know, people run, they get runners high. Like, doing that, man, it just makes you feel so incredible, so awesome, so great, you know? It's not like you think you're better than anybody. It makes you feel so great that you can pass on knowledge that you have to the next generation. Because I'll tell you one thing, back in the day, a lot of people were a-holes, and they didn't want to give anybody information. They didn't want to tell anybody because they thought it was a big secret. Lock the genie in the box. We're not going to tell anybody. We're not even going to tell you what to incubate your eggs at. Oh, you got to cut your eggs? Oh, yeah, 77, you're all set. Like, they wanted you to fail. You know, it was such a big, like, because they wanted, they wanted the hobby just for themselves. And it, that's how I felt, because that's how I was being treated back in the day. And, I, you know, it's not like I was buying cheap. They wanted my six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars but they didn't want to tell me what to do to, to produce these animals. So, 
now that you there's people out there willing to help you and willing to you know uh go that extra mile just to talk to you on the phone you know um there's a lot of people and i'm not reading the comments but there's a lot of people and there's a lot of people probably here um that i've spent you know numerous times you know on the phone with them for hour hour plus speaking to them just kicking it with them and just you know vibing and chilling like yo you know just talking about reptiles and you know and they have questions if i get the answer i'll give it to them but again everybody does things different so if i tell you if i give you an answer to a, your question somebody else may give you a different you know a different answer to your question but basically just because everybody does things different like incubation everybody incubates you know with different mediums some use vermiculite and perlite mix with light diffusers um some people use hatch right i use vermiculite and i you know go with a tried and true method that just always work you know just works 200 200 grams of vermiculite to 200 grams of water and i lay the eggs right in it and they hatch fine i don't get slugs it doesn't get the eggs wet it doesn't ruin the eggs it works so why am i gonna go spend all this you no know, extra money on light diffusers and you know paralyte and you know this no i just get vermiculite you know what i'm saying but you want to get not vermiculite. You don't want to get it with no with no additives, no nothing. Just regular vermiculite. You know, um, I got a, actually a really big bag in the closet that I actually pulled out <laughs> um, the other day because uh, we had to, you know, put some uh, some. Uh, uh, we put a few clutches in, in the incubator, but uh, you know, there's just uh, guys. What you know, just now in 2019 and it's only going to get better you got people producing amazing animals that we've never even seen the looks of before um there's going to be always new genes coming out it's going to be a hobby it's going to be something that i think people can actually turn and i truly believe this people can turn their hobby into a a a, a business um, you know, uh, um, you know, I spoke to a gentleman in the UK and he's actually, uh, it's, his name is Paul from, uh, Urban Constrictors. Um, and he is actually, um, going into it full time now and he's building a facility like, you know, in, uh, you know, on his property and the guy's amazing, man. He's amazing. And whenever he started following me and commenting on my videos and, you know, you know, just the comments he left was, it made me feel good, you know, um, it, it's just, it, you know, this is going to be something that I think is, uh, if you have the right mindset and you got the right attitude and you go about it the right way. You could make your passion, you know, your business. I truly believe that. Um, personally, me, would I ever want to do it full time? No. If it was going in a direction where that we could do it full time, I wouldn't quit my job. I'd probably have my wife quit because, um, I got the health insurance, I get paid more and it just would work out, you know, and my wife is, look, I love my wife to death. She's the greatest thing that ever happened to me besides my son. And she's also very not, you don't see her talking on YouTube. You don't see her on here chilling and vibing with you guys, but I'm telling you one thing, she's a very smart woman. Um, you know, she went from, you know, she spent, you know, she's, you know, she spent time serving our country. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, she's just, she's a great person. 
and and also when it comes to like when I'm not home or when I was out plowing, you know, I would tell her, hey, look at you know, you, you know what snakes are getting paired, put all the males in with the females, just, you know, and she would do it and she would write it all down, the, the date, and then she would put a little label on the bin and she would if she witnessed the lock, she put a check mark. And then, you know, you know, the date was already on there. She put a check box and uh, she, 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 she could run this herself. She could do this herself. My wife is amazing. My wife is really amazing. Um, I mean, I'm just going to read some of the. Um, Let's see, I don't know what's going on here. I, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to all the, um, all the. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention to all the comments. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I was just in the middle of talking. Um, so again, you know, guys. Uh, and another thing I want to speak about. Um, you know, if you are ever, you know, gonna go. Maybe right now you love watching YouTube videos and you maybe you don't make them. But if you decide to do YouTube and you decide to go on this platform or any social media platform, realize one thing. And I realize this already. You're going to get haters. You're going to get people who are going to bash you behind your back. Um, speaking of, let me give my son a kiss, a hug and a kiss. Good night, buddy. I love you. You want to say hi to everyone? Hi. This this right here is gonna be the this right here is gonna be the next you know guy taking over Ultra City Reptiles. Hmm. Good night, buddy. I love you. Mwah. Love you. Have a good night. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Um. So. Uh, so. Uh, Hmm. Um, but you see, we got uh, Blake and Bob in the house, TJ. Um, I'll go and I'll, you know, read everyone who was in. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. Anyway, um, I appreciate it, guys. Um, uh, Thomas, I'll tell my little man you said what's up. Um, so, again, in fact, if you want to get on the social media, any social media platform, realize one thing. You're going to have people who you think are your friends who, who are not your friends. They're going to tell you things either to your face in person or on the phone or through a text message. And then they're going to stab you in the back because people can't stand to see people do good. I was speaking to Ed earlier and I told Ed, you know what? Money and being a... Uh, you know, if I was a big celebrity on YouTube, like an influencer or whatever, dude, it wouldn't change me because I'm me. It wouldn't change me. Like, I mean, and I'm being serious because the guys look at, I was on the side of, I was on both sides. I was, I was really, really broke at one time. And then there was a time in my life that I had so much money, I didn't know what to do with it. Um, but that didn't change me who I was. I wasn't different to my friends. I didn't treat them any different. I still am who I am. And, and, and I still, you know, I, I just, I just can't change. Um, now as speaking about YouTube, I realized that 
I have a lot of children that follow me and I have a son. Sometimes I lose my cool on here and sometimes I, and guys, listen, I'm telling you this right now, nobody is telling me to say this because I don't want you thinking, oh, Ed told him to say this or so-and-so told him to say this. I'm telling you guys right now, this is me saying this. Nobody tells me what to say. I say what I want to say. I am going to try very, very, very hard when I make my videos. I'm not saying I won't get heated, but I'm going to try very hard to say, hey, what if my son was watching that video? Because sometimes I get so, it's not like I get heated, I get so passionate that sometimes I just, like, and, and it, you know, just the work environment I work in, you know, you know, is, you know, telling someone F this, F that, blah, 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 whatever. You say something to me, hey, boom, F you, go through your, your I got to really stop and think, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have a lot of people who follow me that are younger, and I want to set a good example. Um, again, am I, am I going to be this professional? Like I said the other day where, you know, you know, uh, you know, like, Hey guys, this is old Troy city reptiles. And we are going to talk about, you know, the um, blackhead ball python and the characteristics of the blackhead ball python and what it does to different combinations. So it, no, I'm never going to be that way, dude. I'm going to be me, and that's what I'm always going to be. But I have to realize I educate a lot. So the parents allow their kids to subscribe to my channel. And when I'm doing a video on my channel, um, you know, I tend to get passionate about stuff and say how I feel. Or, you know, if someone wants to, you know, basically, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but if you're going to go on someone's video, don't try to make them look bad on their own video or make them look stupid on their own video. Don't do that. Do not go on anyone's video and try to make them look stupid. <laughs> Or make them look dumb. Because you know, at the end of the day, people are going to look you look at you like you're an a-hole. Um, and that's just how I see it. I will never go on anyone's video and try to make them look stupid or try to make them think that I'm better than you. I'm King Kong. Let me bang my chest and let me show you that, hey, I know better than you. Because it, it's, it's not cool to do that. And, and, and it happened to me, and I was kind of, you know, and I'm not going to speak about it, and I'm not going to say, you know, speak about it, because I don't, I know, I really do like, uh, I really do like the individual. I'm not going to speak about it, but the thing is, guys, is, you know, when that happened, I was kind of blown away that it happened the way it happened. But it's done and over with now, and I want to move forward, and I want everyone to know, like, look, at, I don't got beef with anybody. Like, I love my community. I want you guys to understand. If you guys want someone to reach out to, reach out to me. And if anybody feels offended on what I just said, I didn't mean to offend anybody. I'm just saying something. But if what I said offended anybody, if the shoe fits, wear it, wear it, basically. If it shoe fits, wear it. I'm not dogging anybody. I'm not saying anyone's this. I love all you guys. You're my family. You know, whether you're part of TGH or not, listen, you got to understand. I'm here for everybody. I'm here for the guy just getting his first ball python. I'm here for the guy who has more experience than me because you know why I'm here for him? If I can help him in something, you know, there's probably things he knows and I want to pick his brain. We can never stop learning. If we go with that mind frame that, you know, like I can always learn from you, you know, and maybe you can learn from me. You know, we can all help each other out. This community can be a, 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 a great community. Now, understand one thing, like 
we 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 can't be just one finger in this, man. We can't just be like, ah, I'm gonna poke everybody. I'm gonna poke everybody. All of you, you know, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna t- tell you that. I'm gonna tell you this. You don't get nothing done. But when a group comes together, that impact is so much stronger than ah, poke you, poke you. No, come together and 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 you know, as as a as a team. You know what I'm saying? Come together and listen. You can get people from. The East Coast all the way to the West Coast, from the North, the South, everywhere in between, we can all come together and we can be a force to reckon with if we want to be on the same page. But I know there's a lot of people who just want to do their own thing. And that's fine because, look, we have great breeders that do their own thing. You know, Miguel from Always the Pythons, Justin Kabelka, um, you know, uh, then you got the guys at Freedom Breeder. Um, you know, Derek the Meyer, they do their own thing, but you know what? That's what they do. And, and and that's awesome. But I'm saying there's a community that is on, is on, is on a platform such as YouTube and we want to help each other. See, we, we don't just want to do it for us because if that's the case, I would just do videos of me pulling eggs, telling you what, what, what I paired and do, do egg cutting videos. Now, there was a time I said, hey, screw this YouTube stuff. I'm just going to do egg cutting videos, and that's that, because it is what it is. But, dude, you know what? There's so many things we can do. Like, you know, um, somebody mentioned to me, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, gave me advice on um, my tarantula. And, you know... They keep tarantulas. So I wanted to heed their advice. So we went, us, my, me and my wife, us, all choice of reptiles, we placed an order for two um, acrylic um, tank cages that are made for um, like tarantulas. Um, so we got one that's an arboreal one for my pink toe. And we got another one that we're gonna put our giant desert centipede in. And um, I should have ordered a third one because I got a green bottle blue on the way. Um, And um, Tom, there's this guy Tom Morian out of, uh, he's out of Connecticut. He has a YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, it, it's, he's amazing. I spoke to him, not in person, but through message, messenger, you know, we messaged each other, I, you know, and he gave me some great information and he basically told me where I can get my acrylic cages from. The guy's phenomenal, top notch, professional and, and a professional at what he does. And, you know, so I have somebody I can reach out to if I need help with tarantulas. Um, and, you know, uh, I feel comfortable with reaching out to him because I watched a lot of his videos and he's very knowledgeable. Um, and he has some a beautiful looking tarantulas. Like I'm telling you guys, I think tarantulas, a lot of people are going to want to start keeping them because of the beauty. But what I was told And I'm going to tell you guys, start off with beginner species, learn, you know, and a pink toe, he said he would consider a beginner species, is that he would consider a pink toe a beginner species. It's a boreal, in fact, but he would consider a beginner one. He, you know, then he went on saying the green bottle blue, same thing. So I want to, you know, I just think they're beautiful tarantulas. Um, A giant, you know, a, a Vietnamese centipede. Um, I got that, and some people try to give me advice about that. What nobody knows is, look at one of my really good friends, you know, has, you know, a ton, his room is full of centipedes, and he has one that's about, like, 14 inches. It's a monster. The guy knows his stuff, and I'm glad to call him my friend. 
I go to his house, he comes to my house. So if I need help with my centipede, I'll go to him. I'm not going to go to somebody who, or just reach out there, reach out to the stars and say, hey, anybody can give me advice. No, if I know somebody personally, I'm going to go to them because they're my friend, personal friend. Like I sat down and drank beers with him. He comes to my house. I go to his house. Um, wait, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. I, I haven't had a beer with you yet, though. I, I haven't had a beer with you yet. Well, you're all the way in California, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can sit there. You know, we can buy the same bottle of, you know, tequila, and we could have a shot of it. Now, tequila messes the party up, man. You know, tequila goes in and comes right back out. All right. Those will be one of those videos where we go ahead and we'll put a, you know, a disclaimer, and it will be adults hanging out only version. So for all of you youth, you know, you'll have to stay tuned to some of the more PG friendly stuff. Anyways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to tag in real quick because I, I mean, I'm working, guys, and thank you so much to Sean over at Old Troy City Reptiles. He's doing this for me tonight. Um, big shout out to uh, KY Constrictors and Exotics. Um, he wanted to take care of that for us as well, um, so he's going to be taking care of that. I might get Will as well from you know. I, we're going to get some folks, but right now, our good friend Sean did this for me, and he, what a great topic how we can get into the into this you know we're going to get a little more in depth in this in another video but again how many years has this reptile industry been around how hard was it in the past for us to get the opportunity to get the information that we truly needed it's because of the people like sean people like yourself people of the positivity that are like-minded people again you don't have to be a member of tgh you just have to be a positive person you have to be a person out there doing it for the right reasons enjoying the hobby enjoying the lifestyle and if that's you kudos to you and again for those people that contribute in the right way you guys are amazing thank you for doing the things you do but it was hard before it was hard to get the information times have changed you have to do if you're new this is why we're doing this movement so much and so hard and being so active so that those people can find us, so that those people can find our community, the community of positive people, like-minded people like yourselves. Thanks again, Sean. I'm going to let you go ahead and close up, but I love you guys. I appreciate all you guys, and I hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks for joining. As always, remember, the person you were yesterday, that person is gone, and the person you are today is working on the best version of yourself for tomorrow. Thanks again, Sean. All right, guys, uh, I'm not going to be too much longer. As you see, my son uh, just came in the room. Uh, he's getting ready to go to bed. Um, I just got to do a couple things in the reptile room over here. Um, and then uh, it's a night for us. Um, and, uh, you know, before I go, um, I would I, I would love I would love to brought my, you know, uh, Mr. Bubbles in. Uh, Mr. Bubbles is our, uh, our blue tongue skink. Um, I wish I had time to bring him in. But I don't know if uh, if uh, I have time to go bring them. Uh... You're welcome, guys. Um, so uh, you know, maybe next time I go uh, live, I can bring you know I'll bring Mr. Bubbles in here. Mr. Bubbles is our um, you know Indone Indonesian uh, blue tongue skink. He's amazing. I love him. He's awesome. He's uh, the kids love him at the at the you know at, at the at the at the reptile shows. The kids love him, and you know we kind of you know my wife has a little. She knitted something that fits him, and we put it on him. He looks like a little you know you know he looks like a little like it's like a little sombrero outfit. It's, it's pretty cool. I gotta get him dressed up in it, guys, and you guys can check it all out. Um, but. Uh, Guys, thank you very much for stopping in. I'm glad that I can help Ed out. Um, and, you know, I know he's working. And I give, uh, you know, a big shout out on props. You guys seen the video I put out the other day when I was at work. I give a big props and shout out to everybody who's in this hobby who wakes up every day at the crack of dawn to go bust their behind, you know, to make sure that our families have what we need. And, you know, it's people like us that drive this, um, you know, that it's people like us that drive America, you know, it's people like us that build America. It's people like us that, you know, you know, 
we have what we have today, our freedom, you know, you, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, I haven't done this in a long time, but I want to thank and I want to salute all of our soldiers because without them, America wouldn't be America. I want to thank everybody who's on the front line. I want to thank everyone who's first responders, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, um, you know, I'm thanking them because of my own special reasons. You guys may, you guys don't know. I have a lot of friends who are in the military. My wife was in the military. Um, my wife's two best friends are police officers. Um, and they're awesome women. Like they're incredible. Uh, my son's coaches were, uh, fire, they, well, they are firefighters and they're amazing. Um, it's, you know, the, the, you know, just it, it's, it's amazing that we can live in the country we live in and we can, um, you know, have these amazing reptiles. And, you know, I truly believe in my heart, guys. Like I said, if we keep this community strong and if we want to help one another and we keep helping one another and put all our dislikes aside, we put all our disagreements aside. Or if we have a disagreement, let's not be keyboard warriors. Let's speak it out. Let's talk it out. Call me on the phone. Or I'll call you on the phone. Or we'll set up something we can talk. And that's how we should settle stuff. Let's not settle stuff by bickering and leaving nasty comments or emailing somebody, you know, I you know, because I get a lot of emails that will bull crap because it's like why don't you want to leave a why don't you want to leave a public comment because what you don't want people to know that you're a negative person so you so you're going to email me well you know all those emails are saved i can show people the stuff that some people said to me and some people will be shocked and then you know two months go by and then they apologize to me like dude listen i'm so sorry I, you know you know i didn't want to talk to you or whatever and I'm at the point where I'm like, dude, screw you. That's how you felt back then, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? I can't be that way. Because if I'm that way, then I'm basically contributing and being the, and being that person that I'm telling these guys not to be. Um, so let's just, um, you know, guys, let's do the best we can and help each other out. Let's do the best we can, you know, at home with our family, with our husbands, our wives, our sons, our daughters, um, glad I don't have a daughter because I think, you know, I would have to be beating some young boys up. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, glad I don't got a daughter. But, no, I, I love, I, I, you know, I got nieces. I got nieces. I'm going to have to protect my nieces. But, you know, you know whether you're a, a, a wife, whether you're a husband, you know, whether you're, you know, just a single mom or a single dad, you know, do your thing. Rock your thing. Be proud of what you are. Be proud of what you got. If you got a little bit, cherish that. Be proud of it. You know, the most humble people I've met were, were the most poorest people. The people who want to help you the most are pretty much people who, who don't really have nothing. You know, so I'm going to just give every, I'm going to say one thing and I'm going to give this, I'm going to end it on this. Just a challenge for everyone tomorrow. If you guys do it, please, it'll be it'll be amazing, and it'll it'll keep getting played. It will keep getting paid forward. Tomorrow, do one kind thing for somebody. Whether you're at Dunkin' Donuts before work in the morning, and you want to buy the person in front of you, you know, or the person in the back of you, you want to pay for their order, or whatever it is, even even if it's not money, um, you know, do one kind thing tomorrow. If everybody that's here right now does one kind thing tomorrow, it'll pay off because the ball keep rolling. Because that person may say, hey, someone did something for me. Let me do something for somebody else. And you never know how it's going to go. You never know how it's going to go. I will do something tomorrow. I will go to Dunkin' Donuts. I will buy five $10 gift cards. and. I will give them to random strangers that just look like, you know, whether they wave, say hi, 
you know, someone walks by me and smiles at work or, you know, not at work, but I, I'm working on the Omni base, uh, you know, throughout the day tomorrow, I'm going to give away and I'm going to do that. That's going to be what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, Iron Dog, thank you for accepting that challenge, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much for stopping in. And I appreciate it so much. You guys rock, man. I love you guys. Ed, I don't know if you want to close this thing out, brother. As always, much love. And we'll see you on the next one. Maybe I'll figure out how to turn this thing off. <laughs>